Hello students and welcome to this video on 3.2 sources of finance. So this video is the first video in this chapter and this chapter will have two videos. Um, within the topic three finance and accounts, this is the second chapter and this normally follows the introduction to finance chapter. And within this chapter, these are the learning objectives. So we're going to learn three internal sources of finance. We're going to learn eight external sources of finance. And then in the second video, we're going to address this. We're going to look at the pros and cons of the different sources of finance and which one is the best one for a chosen business in a certain context. So let's first off just define the term sources of finance. So a source of finance is basically any way in which a business can raise or obtain money. And what we're going to do is we're going to break these down into internal and external. So the three internal ones we're going to look at are personal funds, retain profit and sale of assets. And basically internal means the funds come within the business or it's generated by the business. External, we're going to look at these eight. And external sources of finance means that yeah, they're funds that come from outside the business, such as outside investors, etc. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the internal ones first. We're going to define the source of finance, and then we're going to briefly look at some pros and cons of each of them. But more of that will be dealt with in the second video. So the first internal source of finance is when is personal funds, and this is when owners put their own money into the company. And this is normally for startups or for sole traders. It might be a, a business has been operating for a year or two. The business needs a bit more money and the owner puts in more of their money if they have it. So for example, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak invested $1,300 of their own money to start Apple. And this is them in their early days over there. Now, some pros and cons of personal funds. Well, one is there's no loss of control, and we're going to see other sources of finance. You may have to give up a percentage of the company. You also, there's no debt. We're going to see that later as well, so there's no interest payments. So the only thing you're giving up is your own money, if you like, and if you lose it, then you're losing your own money. So that's the, the major disadvantage is you end up losing your own money rather than the banks or someone else's. And also, you might not have personal funds. If you're well off, then you're going to have it, but if you not well off, then obviously you're not going to have it. Secondly, we can sell some assets. So selling assets is when you sell items that belong to the business. And this could be anything that the business owns. It could be maybe they own the factory and they sell that. Maybe they sell the land that they own, the machinery, or even patents. So patents are when you have copyright over an idea. And businesses sometimes sell that because they need to raise money. So some pros and cons. Firstly, you gain a one-off payment. So you, if you need cash, then you can get that that way. But then there may well be future costs involved. For example, if you sold the land, then of course you're going to raise a lot of money. But then there's going to be future costs involved because then you're going to have to somehow, you're either going to have to rent it from the person you sold it to, which is called a sale and rent back, or you're going to have to find somewhere else to um, locate your factory. Uh, retain profit is next, and this is when a company makes profit. So when a company makes profit, they can either um, pay it to shareholders as a dividend, or they can retain it, they can put it back into the business. And so retain profit is when a company makes a profit, they don't give it to shareholders, and they put it back into the business. Um, so firstly, the advantage is, well, it's good in a way, because it shows the business is profitable, and you're using the money that you have and you've generated and so, again, you're not having to give up any control. You're not having to take any, on any debt. Um, the disadvantage is if you retain too much, it means that you pay less to shareholders. And at some point, the shareholders may end up selling your shares if you don't pay large enough dividends. Now, that depends on the shareholders. Maybe, maybe the shareholders will see that if you retain the money, then that's going to lead to longer term growth of the company. And they may they may buy into that vision of long term growth. So it depends on the shareholders in that situation. Retain profit is covered more in a later chapter in the finance topic. So on to the external sources of finance, and we're going to break these up into three. The first group is equity finance. Now, equity finance basically means you're giving up um, a percentage of your company. So you're giving up some of your company to someone in return for investment. 
And the main one is called share capital. And this is when you sell part of the business to an investor in return for finance. And this can only be done by limited liability companies because of the word um, shares. Remember, shares are only, um, only exist with limited liability companies that have incorporated. Um, now, the, the major benefit of share capital is that you never have to repay it. So that money that, you, that goes into the company never gets repaid, as opposed to a bank loan where you need to repay it. But what you do give away instead is you give up some ownership. So those people who invest are going to gain ownership in your company. And also you're going to lose some control because they're gaining some ownership. They're going to now want to have some control over decision making. Now, how much control they have depends on the ownership. But the more ownership we give away, then the more control we give away. But then conversely, the more ownership we give away, the more money we raise. And this will often be when a company goes through IPO, goes from being privately held to publicly held. On to business angels. So business angels are often um, wealthy individuals who invest in small businesses. And a really good example is Dragon's Den in the UK. In the US, you've got Shark Tank. And basically, the people here, they're, they're wealthy individuals who are looking to invest in small businesses. Now, the pros and cons are going to be very similar as share capital because, again, you're giving away part of the business to investor in return for finance. But there are some additional pros and cons. One is that you're going to gain the knowledge and experience and connections of, of the investors. And so, for example, in Dragon's Den, often um, these people will invest in the business and because they're going to put quite a lot of money in or they're going to get some ownership, they're going to be invested in the business, quite literally, um, but also they're going to want it to be successful. So they may well be able to mentor the entrepreneur, um, help them out. And also the, the business angel is going to probably have some connections which they can use to help the business be successful. On the other hand, because they're investing in a small business, they're going to expect, hopefully, some profits. And it may be that they have some sort of short to medium term profit expectations. So they may be looking to sell their shares in, say, five years time. Now, again, with, a, with share capital and a company going public, again, shareholders are going to expect this as well. But um, the individual business angel may have um, additional expectations that, that you need to be aware of. Okay, on to debt financing. So debt financing is effectively when you borrow money. Now, the main one is called loan capital, which is where you borrow money, usually from a bank. So I'll just bring myself over there. Um, so, and in this situation, um, you the benefit compared to share capital, the main benefit is that you do not give up control of the business. So with share capital, you're gaining the money, but you're giving up control of the business. With loan capital, you're borrowing money from the bank. The bank in most situations, won't want to have control of your business, but you do have to pay it back. With share capital, you don't pay it back, but of course you'll be paying out dividends. But with loan capital, you have to pay the loan back and you also have to pay it with interest. Overdraft works similarly. Overdraft is when the bank allow your account to go negative. Now we, we have those as well. And banks will have this where um, what will happen is um, if you don't have any money in your account, then normally you can't take any more money out. But if you have an overdraft, then the bank will continue going, giving you money, but your account will go into the negative. Pros and cons, it's very flexible. Um, so if you need money in an emergency, it's a very good way of getting your money that way. Um, and it's a good short term way. So um, if you need money now, but you don't have any money in your account, going to get a loan can take a bit of time. Depends on the loan, depends on the bank. But if you, if you have an overdraft ability, then you can just do it immediately. The problem can be that it can be very high rates of interest. So it's not a good solution for long term, but for short term situations, it can be very effective. Moving on to trade credit. So trade, trade credit is when businesses buy inputs from another business, but um, they do not have to pay immediately. Um, this is normally 30 to 90 days, depends on the businesses. Um, and it's kind of like buy now, pay later. So you buy the inputs from the other business, you get the inputs, and then you pay them later. And this is a form of um, debt finance because effectively you're borrowing money. You, you should be paying now, but they're letting you pay later. So um, the benefit of this is that, again, it's an access to access to capital. It means it's good for your cash flow because you get the inputs now, but you don't have to pay till later. 
The main disadvantage is sometimes businesses may give discount for paying early. So the business might say, okay, you can pay in 60 days, you can pay this amount, but if you pay us now, then you can pay slightly less. And the reason they'll do that is because when businesses give trade credits to other companies, it's bad for their cash flow. They're effectively having to wait for the money to come in. So sometimes they may give incentives to get the money earlier. And so by using the trade credit, you may pay more overall. Depends on depends on the contract that the company signed. Uh, the final one in debt finance is called microfinance. And microfinance is when um, the microfinance provider, which could be a could be a bank, it could be an NGO, for example, um, they provide small loans to businesses and entrepreneurs who might not be able to borrow elsewhere. And this is often in LDCs to help entrepreneurs. So these are these this was made famous by um, this guy, Mohammed Yunus, who won the Nobel, Nobel Prize for this idea, actually. And effectively, this was in LDCs where a lot of entrepreneurs struggle to borrow money because maybe they don't have credit history. Um, they're not someone who the bank sees as worth investing in because they, might, they think they might not be able to pay it back. So what they do is they, they lend these entrepreneurs money um, and it enables those entrepreneurs to then set up their business when maybe they wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Um, now, the main benefit is these entrepreneurs are able to get access to finance when maybe they wouldn't have been able to overall. Um, the main disadvantage is, again, it's small amounts, and some, some see this as unethical. Now, there's a, bit of, there's a bit of a debate over microfinance providers, and it's good to go and read about them, actually. There's quite a lot out there. Um, they're initially set up as kind of charitable organizations to try and help um, people in LDCs who weren't able to set up businesses. But there have been examples of, um, um, and also in the press, they've in some situations have gained bad publicity because they're effectively making money from people who don't have very much. And that's where the unethical comes in. Um, but mostly they're seen as positive, but they have received a bit of negative publicity. Okay, the final one is other sources of finance. So firstly, leasing. Um, this is when you pay for the use of an asset for a period of time. Um, so what you're basically doing is um, you're getting to use something and then you pay for the use of it on a regular basis. And these are common with things like machinery and cars. And as people, for example, I lease my car. And so every I don't own my car. Every month I pay a certain amount of money to BMW to use that car. And at the end of the contract, I have to give the car back. So the main benefit of it is that you don't have to pay up front for all, you don't have to pay for all of the asset up front. So for example, with my BMW, I don't have to buy the BMW up front. I would have to take out a bank loan and then I'd have to buy it overall. And so I can pay for, I can kind of pay for the use of it bit by bit, which is good for cash flow. Um, the main problem is, is it tends to be more expensive in the long run. And this is because the leasing company needs to make a profit. And so they're, they're going to probably charge you more than the cost it, 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 for them to actually have the asset overall. Finally, crowdfunding. And this is when uh, many people invest small amounts of money into a business. I'm sure you've heard of this in your, in your lives as well. And so how do people invest in the business? Well, this takes various forms. Um, it may be that people donate, so they're just giving their money away. It may be that lots of people are kind of investing in the company. So this is a little bit like um, share capital, where lots of people are investing very, very small amounts, and they're getting very small amounts of ownership. And what it allows is, again, the law of large numbers to gain it. It can also work as peer-to-peer -peer lending, where people can lend money. And that's a little bit similar to microfinance providers. But in this situation, it's other people on the um, who are using these sites to, um, to lend money overall. Uh, and the main benefit is that because you've got lots of people involved, you can actually raise lots of money that way, especially as people are only investing small amounts. Um, this is a good example here is business angels. Um, normally business angels are going to invest, are going to, in, are going to invest a large amount of money into um, the business. But in this situation, they might not be, in, they might not be interested if the, um, if the amounts are very small. The main disadvantage is that investors 
may end up expecting some sort of reward. A good example is this uh, computer game he here called Hexarchy. So this is um, this is in development. Um, this is a game that I'm interested in buying in the future. Um, and what they're doing is um, it's actually closed now, but in order to do the development for the game, they needed to raise capital. So what they did, they used, uh, I think they did this on Kickstarter, which is a crowdfunding website. Um, and what they did was they got people to donate. Um, and I think the benefit they gave people was that your name could appear in the credits overall at the end of the game. I, um, I never actually did. I was too late, but that's something I, I might have thrown a few, few euros at. Okay, we've covered all that so far in the syllabus. In the next video, we're going to cover the appropriateness of each of these sources of finance. That's it for now. See you in the next video.